Uh, hello guys, so in this video I want to talk about one really interesting example of uh, let's say dynamical system or let's say like the system of differential equations of the form when we have um, n variables let's say x1, x2 and up to xn and each of these variables is going to be uh, some sort of like species so in other words we have like n species and then there is like uh, a system of differential equation if we're going to take those n species and put inside the ecosystem, system then uh, uh, that system of differential equation is going to describe the interaction of those uh, n species in the ecosystem and that uh, system of differential equation is called Lotka Voltaire. Um, so what is the idea? How are we kind of going to derive that? Uh, unfortunately, to understand the full derivation, we need kind of to go into graduate level math, but I can just mention certain terms. Um, so basically, the construction starts with the idea that you need to construct uh, some sort of like Poisson bracket on um, n-dimensional Euclidean space. So uh, what is like n dimensional Euclidean space? The model that I'm going to take is going to be just r to the n. And then what is going to be the Poisson bracket? Uh, so Poisson bracket is going to be kind of some sort of manipulation with a certain objects. And those objects are going to be uh, a smooth functions on our n. So in other words, uh, let's take just f and g to be uh, some smooth functions on our end. And then what I'm going to do, uh, I have like the Poisson bracket that is going to tell me that I'm going to take these two functions, put them together, and the output is going to be another function. So in other words, this curly bracket over here give me a function. And that function, let's say f curly g, is again is going to belong to uh, smooth functions on the end. And remember that um, in my previous video, I talked about that the idea of the smooth function that you can take your function and take as many derivatives as you want. And all those derivatives are also going to be smooth. So um, right now we have like basically two functions f and g in terms of um, n variables. Um, and what I'm going to do uh, the first uh, thing that I'm going to describe, I'm going to describe how we're going to cook up a new function if we know functions f and g. And for that, I'm going to just set the rules. So we're going to say that we're going to create a new function, which is going to be equal to the sum of indices i and j runs from 1 to n. And uh, when I'm going to put the sum sign, I need like to describe what, I'm, what kind of terms I'm going to sum. And I'm going to have i of uh, j and k. I'm going to ex explain explain in a second. Sorry, a. I'm going to explain in a second what is a. X um, i times x j, uh, which are going to be just uh, my variables. And finally, I'm going to take the partial derivative of f corresponding to x i, and partial derivative of g corresponding to x j. So. Um, we can see that uh, since, so first like what we need to argue, we need to argue that this kind of function is smooth. But that function is smooth because uh, our variables itself like xi and xj are smooth and we know f and g are smooth so their partial derivatives are also smooth. And one more thing that I need to describe, I need to des describe what is my aij. So aij is going to be uh, the element of matrix A, where matrix A is going to be um, squishy-metric. So in other words, it means the A transpose is equal to negative A. Or in other words, to make it even like in simpler terms, it means if I have two by two matrix, I'm going to have the matrix of form zero, A minus A and zero. And if, if I'm going to have three by three matrix, I'm going to have zero on diagonal, and then I'm going to have a, b, and c, 
and minus a minus b and minus c. So uh, that is like the definition of uh, skew symmetric matrix. So uh, so what does that mean? Like it means that my term a i j uh, is going to be equal to the negative term of a j i. So uh, right now, what do we have? Uh, we have uh, the definition of the Poisson bracket of two smooth functions on our end. And uh, we're going to be ready to uh, describe uh, lotka volterra equations. So uh, equations go the following. I'm going to just kind of uh, state some rule. So there is like certain derivation when we can argue that derivative of uh, my xi so in other words, when we have like um, a system of differential equations, remember like this dot notation was introduced by Newton, then we're going to take derivative uh, of some uh, variable like xi. And that, again, like I'm going to skip kind of this derivation, is going to be equal to um, the Poisson bracket of some function h and xi. So again, like I'm, I introduce a new object, a new like function h, and function h is going to be um, a really interesting function. So uh, I'm going to talk probably in my future video. So I, function h is going to call a Hamiltonian functions, sorry, a Hamiltonian function, and that function basically describes the energy of the system. So knowing the function, you're going to know. Uh, how like your system is going to be behaved and you literally can see why because your function is given in the definition of x i dot and uh, in this particular case what is going to be my function h is going to be the following i'm going to define that h of x1 up to xn to be the sum between i is equal to 1 to and n of the following values uh Q i uh, logarithm of x i minus x i. So what the what here I'm doing? I'm going to introduce um, new variables uh, Q i. So it's going to be just some uh, real numbers. And since I uh, put my x i under the logarithm, that means I need to make assumptions that all my xi's are going to be positive. So um, I'm kind of taking the part of Rn, uh, which all my variables are going to be positive. So if I have three-dimensional space, it's going to be the first octant, and if I have two by uh, two Cartesian system, it's going to be the first quadrant. Quadrant. Okay. <coughs> and so now, if I have this function h, by having this equation over here. And have the, having this function h, what you can literally do, you can take um, your x i dot, plug in your h inside this equation right here, take the derivative, so instead of f, you're going to have h, instead of g, you're going to have x i, do the computation, and you're going to obtain uh, the following expression on the right. I'm going to call it epsilon i x i plus the sum of j goes to one, uh, j goes from one to n of a i j x i and x j. Where of course epsilon i is going to be equal to the sum from j goes to one, from one to n a j i uh, times q i, sorry q j. So what do we see here? Um, like if I'm going to right now take this um, i and run be between like uh, one and n, then I'm going to obtain the system of uh, linear system of, of which is like uh, of n differential equations. And on the right, you can see that is going to be depend on x i and x i times x j. So for like a short analysis, so first of all, this is going to be a lot of Volterra uh, equations, which describes uh, the interaction between n species in closed ecosystem. 
And you can see just by taking, for example, like right hand side, analyzing it just for a second, that interaction between n species is going to be uh, given by single terms of xi and the products of xi and xj. So basically, in the process of interaction, you can see that this product probably like represents how the species are going to interact between each other. Okay, and in this short video, I just wanted to talk about um, what kind of short, cool thing uh, I learned today. And I found this really fascinating that um, interaction between n uh, species in a closed ecosystem can be described by this kind of differential equation. Okay, guys, thank you for watching and have a nice day.